Hey everyone, okay, this is going to be part one of my break-in video series. Uh, this is my setup. Um, this is a hoodie break-in bench. I've, I've used to be able to mount the fuel tank on here. I've taken that and kind of move it off to the side. And I'll explain that in a few. You guys see a servo here. I had an idea of running a, uh, you know, a radio to do the break-in, but the, the engine gives off so much vibration, the servo twitches too much. So I, I that was a bad idea. So I just left the servo here so I can operate the throttle rather than the stand, and then I just run a return spring to uh, pull the throttle closed. Um, okay, uh, I've got my competition heater on there. What I've done before that was I put, uh, wrap the head, the cooling head in foil, then put this on, and that'll allow less heat to escape while it's uh, while it's running. Because the amount of fuel that I run through these engines, uh, they struggle pretty hard. It's, it's kind of hard to keep this thing to making temperature, especially if it, if it's going to be colder outside. So, and I generally do them in the early spring. So I just uh, came up with this way to do it. Um, so I'll be putting a heat gun to this too. Right now what I'm doing is just like a preliminary heating. I've got it heated up to 95 degrees Celsius, which is right around a little, about 204, 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so you're going to see this and know it's not 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it's 95 degrees Celsius. And um, But I will take this thing up to about 120 before I start it, which is about 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it'll cool off from there as soon as the fuel starts going through it. Uh, the purpose of breaking these engines in uh, is um, so the components can wear together because I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, how these engines work, but I'm going to explain it anyway for the people that uh, maybe don't understand it. The, the, there is no compression rings or anything on these pistons in, in this engine to, to help it build compression it relies on a tapered um, sleeve so the sleeve is smaller in diameter at the top than it is at the bottom so when the piston goes up it goes into what they call the pinch zone because the piston piston is actually getting pinched in there and it goes up that way nothing no air or fuel or anything can escape around the piston and it builds up that compression and then once the mixture ignites it forces the piston down um, the reason why we break them in and get them up to operating temperature is that everything expands and once it does expand to your operating temperature which is anywhere between 200 degrees and 240 degrees maybe even a little bit more um, all the metals expanded and then the piston and sleeve can start wearing in at its normal operating temperature because the final machining of these these engines are actually done when you first start them up so it's very important that you take your time doing this what you're actually doing is when that pistons going up and down in that sleeve it's actually polishing the side of the sleeve um, the longer you take doing that the harder the polish becomes it, it, it almost becomes like a like it, it does become like a mirror finish and, and it's very hard and, and it'll wear very slow once it is worn in if you do it the right way so it's very important to take your time doing it. Don't rush the process. Make sure the engine makes temperature. And then after that, I will never probably monitor my temperatures ever again on the engine. Once in a great while, I'll see what the engine's running for a temperature just to be curious to make sure that maybe I'm not running um, too cold or anything. But I can you can usually hear these things uh, if you have a good enough ear when they're on their optimal tuning you know, on their good tune, when they're getting on the pipe and they're really singing, uh, you know the difference between too lean and too rich. Uh, that just comes with experience. That's why I think a lot of guys do turn to a temperature gun to make sure that they are basically making the right temperature and they're not going to prematurely wear the engine out. So it's very important, like I said, um, <clears throat> to let this thing, what I'm doing right now, I've got it heated up to about, I don't know, this is about 206 degrees or so, who knows. Um, this is just giving everything a chance to kind of expand and co contract. This is probably about my fifth time running it through this heat cycle that I'm doing. Um, it just, like I said, gives all the metals to kind of expand. They might distort just a little bit. So when I start the process, 
of breaking it in, uh, the metals won't be so, you know, distorting when it's running. So, I, I mean, I just really take my time doing this. So, um, and I do, like I say, run a heat gun through it because this engine right now, I, I, it's kind of hard to tell, but all these needles are actually at the 100% stock setting. Um, and, you know, they're, they're extremely rich from the factory. And I'll actually, probably to get it to idle, I might play with the, um, with the low speed needle just to get it to kind of hold a good idle. And then it, from then on, it's just the top needle. I'll, you'll, you guys will see me with the screwdriver. I'll probably open it way up, even past this, at wide open throttle, making sure that the engine's still on temperature. The reason for that is, is I want as much fuel going through this thing just an overly ridiculous amount of fuel going through this, still maintaining over 200 degrees, so this engine has plenty of lubrication to get that good polish on the side of the sleeve. And also the tip of the piston. That's, that's the most important part of the engine right there. That's where all your compression comes from. So you're going to see me messing around with the needles, bringing it lean, bringing it rich, and I'm just going to try to keep the temperature maintained as best as I can. And then um, I will go through that process over and over and over again. First, I usually start out with it just idling for like a tank or two, just get the bearings and everything a chance to kind of seat in and just get that initial um, first, you know, when the piston's going up and down, the first starting of the polish. And then I'll just gradually start bringing up the RPMs. But I'm probably going to idle about a tank through it. Maybe just gently you'll see me pulsing the idle up and down just to kind of get a little more fuel through there. And the piston going up and down at different speeds to start polishing. And then I just gradually increase the RPMs. Um, once I get to a point where it's really just screaming... Um, I'll, after I'll shut it down and I'll start to roll the engine over and I can actually feel if the pinch is wearing out like right now I'm gonna rotate it over and right there it's kinda stuck well that I kinda marked the propeller okay it's up at 12 o'clock and if I can start moving the propeller over here I know it's a little bit past that point so the pinch the, the initial pinch that these things come with is starting to go away and that means it's starting to get really high polished on the side so it's just, like I said, you guys got to really take your time. Don't rush the process. I'm probably going to run a, a good half a gallon through this or more if I need to. And then at the final stage of the break-in, what I'm going to do is I will lean the engine out. I will start kind of tuning, checking the response of the engine. Um, lean it out a little more. Start leaning out the uh, low-speed needle Maybe bring the idle down a little bit because they're also set pretty high on the idle to compensate for all the fuel you're putting in. And I just leave everything alone and I'll, I'll kind of tweak it in here and there just to do a final tweaking when it's first running. And then I kind of just leave it alone. But at the very end of the process, um, I'll start putting the low speed needle right about flush, which is about normal for an Overossi engine on its low speed uh, needle setting. And then I'll also bring this in to a little bit past flush or whatever and then like I said I'll just start checking the res the response of the engine if it's got a good snap and a good crisp acceleration and a really nice um, real nice getting on the pipe sounding really good uh, then I'll just double check my uh, my pinch and, and how the engine feels when it rolls over and if I feel that it's uh, done then I put it in the buggy and Usually at that point, it's pretty darn close to a really good race tune, naturally from day to day because of uh, ambient temperatures and humidity and all the other factors that come along with tuning. Um, it's usually pretty darn close. All I got to do is just barely give it a couple little tweaks here and there, and I can get the motor dialed in. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up so I don't have to explain this and then then go and start the engine because then it's going to be a long process there, and I want to take you guys through this completely uh, with me so you know you guys can see everything I mean yeah you're probably gonna see this thing it's gonna flame out I'll almost guarantee it I always have it flame out on me when it's on the bench because I'm running so much fuel through it and all I do is just hurry up and uh, put the glow igniter on and fire it back up and just pretend like nothing ever happened because it's gonna happen you got so much fuel going through there it's just gonna blow the glow plug out um, 
you know, at least the, when it's glowing. And uh, at the end of the process, I usually do swap out the glow plug with a brand new one just because, uh, you know, you've pretty much just tortured the hell out of the glow plug by breaking it in. So, um, like I said, I, I hope this helps everybody out. I really hate to babble so much, but everything I, I'm saying I feel is extremely important. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to unplug this thing, let it cool off. This is probably the fifth or sixth time I've done it. Uh, you, you probably don't have to do this, but I just feel that it's pretty important. Like I said, this whole process that I'm doing, I've had nothing but great results with. Um, I usually get a new engine every season, but every single engine that I have... Um, we'll probably start and run. I usually bring them to the track for a backup just in case something happens. So I mean, I've had, I've, I've had, I have engines back. My some of my engines have six, seven gallons on them, and they're still running really strong. So uh, you know, you got to take this into the factor too that uh, changing your air filter, like I explained in my last video. So. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them, and I'm going to try and get started on this break-in process as soon as we get some pretty good weather, which I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks or something. Uh, if we happen to get a nice day and I feel it's not too cold out there, I'm, I'll take this stuff out and start getting going on it. So, sounds really good, guys, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.